Hey everyone, this is Christopher Luxon, the former CEO of Air New Zealand. This is John Lee Dumas, the founder and host of Entrepreneurs on Fire. This is Tracy Ibarra. I'm an executive solutions at Dell Technologies. This is Travis Chappell, founder of Build Your Network. If you are wanting to learn how to embrace change, to navigate through disruption as a leader, then listen to the Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast. The Leadership is Changing podcast with my good friend, my very good friend, Dennis Giannoutsos. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsos. Hey, listeners, welcome to a mashup. This is whereby I actually bring together some uh, of my guests throughout several months that have been working uh, with them and as I interview them. So I'm going to bring snippets from each of the different interviews into what we call a mashup. Now, this very first mashup that we have here is from two ladies that I interviewed from episode 269, Dr. Maya Zielik, and also episode 270, Natasha Miller. Now, Dr. Maya, she talks about, well, the episode title is, You Can Be Whatever You Want to Be. And Natasha's episode title is, You Trust Them and They'll Trust You. So what I encourage you to do is sit back, relax, and take some notes and listen to these two mashups as we get underway. Here's a question for you, and it's an interesting one in the sense that you probably have many, but I think, you know, who's your favorite leader and why? Now, this person can be alive or from history, but who was that person? My grandfather. God bless his soul. My grandfather, I was born and raised in, in Bosnia, Sarajevo, former Yugoslavia, and many of your listeners will recognize some of the tragic and troublesome history we had on top of having wonderful people and, and great uh, historical sides and, and beauty. So my grandfather was a very pivotal person in my life and my upbringing. I was four or five years old, and we would open our mornings with uh, playing a party of chess. Afterwards, we would do a lesson on a particular topic, philosophy, logic, geography, history, politics. I was being asked how to solve some of the issues in the Middle East when I was five years old. I felt that was very normal, and I felt every single little girl has this conversation with her grandfather. I had to recognize uh, where New Zealand is on the card and I on the map, and I was also trying to, I had some numbers on, on the industries that New Zealand is known for. Yet again, I thought that was very normal. When I turned seven years old, when I started going to school, talking to my friends, I realized that was quite unique. And not normal in, in the sense of what's normal nowadays. He was always telling me I can be whatever I want to be. And he was always telling me, because keep in mind, I was coming from a patriarchal society. My grandfather kept telling me, you can be whatever you want to be. And as a woman, you always have to be independent and you always have to have your own money. And I didn't realize how revolutionary that was coming from a man that was born during the Great Depression, coming from a man coming from his type of upbringing. I was always saying, okay, as a woman, I can be whatever I want to be, check. I have to be financially independent. And he always said, you can do whatever you can do, whatever you want to do, as long as you have the qualities for a particular position, as long as you bring in the best to the table with integrity. And he always said, with compassion. That is awesome. That is huge. From the perspective of everything you just said, right, from his upbringing, from the areas that you were living in, right through to what he shared with you, that is huge. Be independent and earn your own money. That is massive. Yeah. And so I'm loving it. And so having conversations with your family, with your grandfather is really important. I love it when you say went to school and then realized that wasn't normal. <laughs> Because as a, as, a, as a young kid, sometimes we're experiencing certain things in life thinking everyone else is experiencing those. And when I realized, I didn't realize how unique he was up until I started going to school. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I, I love it. I think it's great. It's interesting you, you you suggested your grandfather because when I was, when we did the 200th episode, I was asked myself, I, I was interviewed as like, like you're being interviewed now. And I got someone to interview me and I was asked who was my favorite leader. And it said, it was actually two, it was my dad. It's, it is my dad. And it was my grandfather. And because Greece is where I originate from. And yeah, it's really amazing. I, I love what your grandfather said to you. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, neighbors. From we're, we're from the Balkans. We're neighbors. Exactly. But I, I, I love what he said to you. That's brilliant. And I've, 
But also, I, I love the fact that you've taken it and you've done something with it, which is really important. Now, the show here is called Leadership is Changing. When I mention that title of the show or that statement, what does that mean to you? I think we, and, and it's not a cliche, during the times of COVID, we realized in order to be sustainable as far as the company or leaders, you have to drastically change, get yourself out of the comfort zone. Now, we were always talking about these comfort zones in the past, but I think that accelerated quite a bit in the last two years. And uh, one of the Forbes publishers, Rich Colgard, who also serves on our Forbes Board of Advisor, Advisors, he actually recorded the interviews with the top level CEOs within the United States. I actually built a class around those interviews. And these CEOs were saying where they were in January, February prior to COVID versus what happened to their companies and themselves March, April. So if you're that kind of level, that kind of level of success, and you're having to constantly evolve and constantly change, picture what the rest of us have to do, or your listeners that are currently at the mid-level manager positions or aspiring to be managers or leaders and not even leadership students that are listening. So don't get settled. Some of you are being educated for the careers that don't exist at this point of time. By the time you graduate, you may go into a career path. I always remember my grandma telling me, I know you are a professor and I know you're looking at that box. She was talking about laptop, but I'm so confused where your students are. <laughs> so picture her world prior to, you know, modern technology. She's saying my granddaughter is a professor. Her students are somehow in her laptop. I'm not sure how that works. Make the long story short, you have students right now that 10 years from now, they will have careers that don't exist today. So you have to learn the core leadership skills to be adaptable. Some of the skills that were that were working for us through history, being adaptable, being courageous, being proactive, being hard worker, having your goals, but being able to adjust and change on a moment's notice. Yep. I think those those skills and that are built in cement. In other words, you're, you're developing them and growing them, and that's the foundations. But the goals or the, the roles that you're doing are in sand, and they will move and adjust, and we need to be able to move with them in the times as well. Great, great. So we've heard about your grandfather. We've heard about your grandmother, which is pretty cool. And, yeah, I, I love what you say. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't get settled. And I think that what I'm also seeing with a lot of CEOs I'm talking to is that with the cycle we are in today, you know, are we in the right business? Uh, do we have the actual right organizational structure to support that? And do I have the right leadership team to help lead that, move that forward going? And it's really important to see that because a lot of them don't. And some of them have got their heads in the sand and they're not, they're not looking around and they won't be around for much longer if they don't wake up and get on with it. So COVID has really rattled us and uh, waking people up and taking things to a new level, which is, which has been pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I don't believe in yours, yours re- resolution. I'm actually get, get tiny, that get slightly annoyed by those. You have have to consistently revamp yourself and create goals for yourself throughout the year. Mm-hmm. So don't 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 have the calendar trigger, you know, your your new set of goals because usually we abandon those. Yes. But constantly work on your, you know, I tell my kids one year plan, three year plan, five year plan. My daughter's in high school. She's like stuff like I mean, my two year plan is to finish high school. I said, well, what's afterwards? You know, stuff along those lines. And that's what I do. And you know what? And 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 sometimes some things I'm able to achieve. Sometimes I'm some things we're not able to achieve. I mean, there are a lot of external factors at all as well. But as you work towards a particular goal, you may discover something else that you want to work on. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Totally. And I think uh, there's a there's a quote that I always put out there on social media on the 2nd of January. Let's change gears a little bit here. And let's let's ask you a question around who's your favorite leader? Now, this person can be from can be alive or from history. Uh, you may have several, but who's your favorite leader and why? This is a very interesting answer to your question, because I didn't know we were going to go so deep into the musical metaphor But I think the universe has arranged for this all to culminate with the answer. Diane Pope, who was an incredible orchestra conductor for me in high school, junior high and high school. Now, the reason why she was such a great conductor and she's still living is she really inspired a bunch of hormonal kids, right, to to not only play in tune, but play with passion and be dedicated and be disciplined And she saw in me something that was special. Now, I think she may have also seen that I was struggling at home. And what she did was she arranged for me to study with a college professor at Drake University in eighth grade. That was terrifying, but so good for me. And I said, yes. I don't know how I had the, you know, the goal to do that, but I guess under her guidance, I felt safe, but that was just extremely terrifying. But to watch her manage us 
humans <laughs> pull out the most music possible and then show up at the podium during concerts in a ball gown with her hair done just gorgeous. She was beautiful. And I didn't know at the time that being a female conductor was a rare situation, especially back then. I think it still is, but she was brilliant. And I think I had learned leadership skills as well as grace, as well as how what you wear actually can make a difference. Yeah, uh, beautiful. And I, and I love the fact about the grace and about the fact that what you wear make, can make you beautiful and out there. But also it sounds like, and I don't know, you, you tell me, but it sounded like to me, because I'm sort of summarizing pretty quickly here, it was that even though she was the a, a woman conductor, she was just out there and did her best with the team and did it with grace, which is a great way to do it. That's excellent. What a wonderful example and role model for people to follow. And we have the college that I went to, when I say college in this country, when we say college, it's a high school, an equivalent to the US. We call it college, we call college university, right? And so when I went to college here, we had a, a sort of a, a Latin sort of saying, which was limited, upset et imperiati, which meant was take the light and pass it on. So it's almost like Diane Pope has given you the light or and was taking the light and they are now pass it on to you. I love that. Yes. And I actually really do highlight and write about her in my memoir that's coming out in March. And, you know, not everyone in my life got to make it into the book. It would have been <laughs> a 3000 plus page memoir of so, but she really was that beacon of light. And I'm happy to pass on the light after her. That's wonderful. Well done. Alrighty. So the show here is called Leadership is Changing. When I say that title, or that statement, what does it mean to you? It's more of a personal thought rather than an organizational or a global thought of leadership. And for me, what I learned over the pandemic, which we're still in, by the way, is not that I have to remind you, but is that I now understand more specifically that the people in your organization are the absolute most precious gem to protect and develop. I know in, in the world of entrepreneurship, that said a lot, but I'm not sure if it's really focused on in big business and larger businesses. And I can see how it would be a challenge because there's so many layers of management and there's a whole group of people that upper management have no idea who that is. I'm wondering if what I actually realized as an experience that the people that work for my company are the most important thing, if that will ripple through all businesses of all sizes in the future. Well said. I think you're totally right. And if you think about, if I think about the events and entertainment business that you're, you're in and, and been in and, and so forth, what you actually do in events in entertainment is that you create an experience for people. So that's what's happening. And then, so you've used the words just now about an experience for those employees or for the members of the team and so forth. And I think you're so right. The bigger the organization gets, they start to forget about that experience about, about people and about the individuals. And then I see a lot of organizations talking about their customers and stakeholders and sales, and they always leave people to the last piece. And I think that they should be one of the first pieces, right? Because they are the most important thing. If you don't have the right people on board, it ain't going to work. If you don't actually have people on board, it isn't going to work. Yep. Yeah. I didn't understand that viscerally well enough, in my opinion, before the pandemic. And I'll tell you what, what has happened when I finally came to that realization is that I think, of course, my team is happier than ever, but I'm happier than ever. And, you know, sometimes you have to look at yourself. Sometimes you have to do things for yourself. And it's funny to think that I didn't completely get that pre-pandemic, but we all are on this journey and we have different milestones and different pacing to get to them. And I guess I'm just a slightly light, late bloomer. Well, the, the thing here is that, as you said, we all learn, but we all learn at different stages, right? And I think it's just great to hear leaders saying that they've learned from something and now I can move on and do things and, and so forth, which is, which is good, right? Because as leaders, sometimes there are some leaders. Tasha, I've done an email, or an email, an episode really, uh, recently, which was in relation to take both masks off. I think we've got the COVID mask that we're wearing, but leaders are hiding behind another mask and that is their title or their ego or other stuff as well. And they're not, not really bringing the true person to the picture. I think bigger success happens when you're able to let go 
of that mask and that ego and realize that it actually is doing you a service rather than a disservice. So again, that takes time, that comes with time and wisdom. Hey, listeners, I hope you really got a lot of great information and thoughts in relation to what Dr. Maya and Natasha have shared in their episodes. If you're really wanting to listen to the full episodes, I'm going to encourage you to go and do that. Listen to episode 269 and 270. Because you see, it's quite cool because I actually ask them more questions and there's so much rich information in the different episodes. So feel, feel free to go ahead and check those out and love to hear what you think about these different episodes. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world.